Good morning, everyone. I want to say a special welcome to any guests we might have with us today. You are definitely welcome here at Prairie Bible Church. As you can see, we're in a gym today. But rather than exercise our bodies this morning, let's exercise some praise to our God. Will you please stand and join me in worship? Before the world was made, before the world was made, before you spoke it to be, you were the King of Kings. Yeah, you were, yeah, you were, and now you're reigning still, enthroned above all things. Angels and saints cry out, we join them as we sing, glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God forever. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God forever. Creator God. Breath, so I could praise your great and matchless name all my days, all my days. So let my whole life be a blazing offering, a life that shouts and sings the greatness of our King. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. Please be seated. I would like to welcome everyone to uh, church this morning at Prairie Bible Church here. And as Jesse indicated, this is Prairie Bible Church on location. And although it seems like it's just across the hall, boy, it's amazing when you move across the hall how much different the setup can be. So we appreciate your patience and that we all made it here this morning and are looking forward to it. Uh, for those that are under the age of 18 amongst us today, the reason we're on location, you guessed it. They're prepping the lunchroom across the hall. School is almost here. I got a few yes. Um, we are glad that you're able to join us this morning. Um, as we start off, I would like to welcome any visitors and also just ask that anyone would uh, fill out our attendance pads as we're just going to pass them around. 
if you uh, put your name down, any contact info there, that we could then share our weekly email with you. <clears throat> and we've also got some prayer cards that Sarah and Hope are going to hand out. If you've got a joy or a concern that you want to share with the Prairie Bible Church family this morning, we hope that you would uh, grab one of those cards, fill out that joy or concern, and then we'll pick them up during our uh, next few songs and share that during our community prayer time. A couple of big things coming up uh, real quickly that I want to remind everyone, and hopefully that you're planning to join us and be able to be a part of. Tonight, we are having our church potluck and baptism service. Uh, Five o'clock out in Fairfax at our house, we're going to have uh, baptisms. Uh, Bill just asked, he said, and we want to make sure everybody knows, the dunking starts at five. Don't be late. And for those of you that don't remember, and, and I don't want to spill the ruin the surprise, but myself and I know Courtney for sure are going to be baptized tonight. We're excited about it, right? We're excited about being dunked. <laughs> Courtney admitted to me she's a little nervous if Patrick Craig is going to bring her back up. So that's the key. You want to come tonight, make sure that that happens. We hope that you can join us, 5 o'clock. And then uh, we are going to have potluck uh, following that immediately after. And as a reminder, we do have a pool there for those of you who were able to join us last year. Um, I had someone ask me this week that don't worry about the baptisms and then swimming in the pool. Pastor Craig is going to package up all the holy water after the baptisms. He's going to put that away, and then we'll fill the pool back up. Anybody wants to swim, bring your suits. You can swim tonight. The pool will be open. No problem. So we hope that you can stay for dinner and swimming. Uh, there'll be some yard games and just have a, a great time uh, hanging out as a family tonight, kind of a little potluck special. So we hope that you can join us for that. The other thing I want to mention just briefly is next Tuesday, not this Tuesday, but the 13th, is a Discover Prairie Bible Church over at Kava House at 6.30. Just the idea of being able to be with Pastor Craig and Lisa, ask any questions to learn more about Prairie Bible Church, about who we are, what we believe. For instance, if you want to know what he does with that holy water when he takes it out of the pool, where he stores that, where he saves it, you can ask him that then. Any questions are for fair game, and we uh, would encourage anybody that has questions or thoughts or just wants to get to know Craig and Lisa better to attend then. And that will be again Tuesday, August 13th at Kava at 6.30. The other thing is I want to uh, take a chance to introduce a special guest that we have with us today. Uh, I'm going to invite Micah and Brianna Fowler to come up with me. They are missionaries from Costa Rica. And it's a wonderful God story quickly as how they, um, and I will share this real quick, of how they got connected to us. Um, Shane and Cindy Coffrin and their family were going to Costa Rica this spring. And they decided that they wanted to be able to help if they could. And, they'd, and it was actually Cindy's mom, I may get the story a little wrong, but it'll sound good either way. Cindy's mom said, you know, we're going, and, and she was going as well, and put out on Facebook, they would love to be able to help missionaries in Costa Rica. Micah and Brianna had put out a note to their contact saying that they wanted to try to establish a, missionary, a ministry in the local prison, and they were going to need support and help with some Bibles. And through those connections, they were able to meet up. The Coffrin family was able to take multiple Bibles down in their suitcases and then met Micah and Brianna down in Costa Rica to be able to help them and provide a, an uplift to their ministry in the prison. And then they decided to come back, and they're back in the States just for a little while, and said, well, would you be willing to come and just share a little bit about what you're doing and how you're affecting lives down there? And they said, we'd love to. Well, that part I might embellish, but we're glad that they're here. I'm going to grab a microphone. They're going to just share a little bit about their ministry and what they're doing and how we can maybe continue to help. Awesome. So, okay, I'm on. I'm told. So uh, I'm Micah, and this is Brianna Fowler. Uh, we are parents to four children, uh, ages 19 to 11. Um, we actually came back at this point in time to bring our 19-year-old back so that she could uh, start life as a kind of adult and start adulting. Um, and so she, in this time, has gotten her first job. Uh, she put out one application, got that job, and uh, we're looking forward to her getting established back here. Um, we've been married 20 years and just recently started with Youth for Christ about four years ago, Youth for Christ International. Um, Youth for Christ International exists to uh, reach every youth everywhere with the gospel of Jesus Christ so that they can make an informed decision about Christ and become lifelong followers of him. And that's our goal in Costa Rica is to set up that ministry, um, uh, that ministry there. Youth for Christ International has 63,000 workers in the world. They're in over 110 countries, and in 2017, they ministered to 7 million youth. Um, so it is a very impactful ministry. We have lots of volunteers and staff. Um, 
in other places around the world, but in Costa Rica where we are, we're just getting started. Um, we've spent the last year being involved in other ministries, um, and you can see some of those ministries back uh, in the back. I have a computer running with a PowerPoint, um, so if you want to see any of those ministries, um, uh, that's back there. If you want to talk to us afterwards, uh, we'll be back to talk and answer any questions you may have about Costa Rica, about life in Costa Rica, about ministry and what we're doing there. Uh, but we just are really getting started. Um, we're doing English classes. Uh, my wife is teaching English classes um, uh, twice a week, and we have students that are regularly coming to teach or to learn English um, because English is one of those tools that mo moves them into like a next class level, so from poverty to middle class. Um, and it's just that big of a tool. Uh, but she, the way she teaches it, she introduces scripture at the beginning of the class. She's Focuses, or focuses and tries to engage them in two languages, so they're forced to think a little bit harder about who Jesus Christ is, what the Bible's saying about Jesus Christ, and then she moves into her topic, and just the kids love her, and have been constantly texting her about, when are you coming back, teacher? Um, we want you back. You're not leaving us, are you? Um, and so we're excited to get back. Uh, we've been here for six weeks, um, and we'll leave out Friday to go back to Costa Rica, and we're excited to be there. Um, some ministries that we're hoping to get started is this juvenile justice ministry. Um, really, it's a prison ministry because everybody at any age is just in the prison. Um, so we're not only impacting youth, but we're impacting adults as well who have been um, affected by crime, alcohol, drug addiction, and things like that. Um, and we're just, uh, it's a pleasure to be there and to do that. Um, and... One of the other reasons we're back and we're here is because um, we have financial needs. Minis missionaries uh, have to raise their money. Um, we've had a big transition this last year and um, lost several donors. We've had several die as well this year, so it's been kind of rough on us. Um, but we've had to use up what we've had in reserve, and so we're trying to build up that reserve, and we're also uh, asking for monthly partners that would want to come and join us in our ministry. Uh, you don't have to come down to Costa Rica, but if you want to financially join our ministry as a financial partner or even as a prayer partner, we would love to get in touch with you. We would love to contact you and keep frequent contact with you about what is going on in Costa Rica and what God is doing there. Um, he's moving in our lives uh, and the lives of Costa Rica as well. And we just want to say thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. We, um, we had a good time. We spent the evening with Cindy and Shane last night and with, with Kyan. And um, we learned how the origin of this church and how much it's grown in the last two years. Is that right? And that's amazing what's happened here. Obviously, you're a beacon in your community, and we're excited about what's happening here. We were gifted two coffee cups, which for people from who live in Costa Rica where coffee is life, um, that was amazing. And so every time we drink out of that cup, we want you to know that we will be praying for your church community. Thank you for the opportunity today. Well, it's awesome. And again, as I said, it was a, a God story that even just connected the Coffrins and the followers together. And they can be here to share with us. And so we uh, welcome you into our family. And whether you like it or not, we will be praying for you. Um, they didn't share, but they gave me a postcard. And I think you've got some more of these. They've got a little card. So if you want to catch them in the back, <clears throat> um, just it's got their contact info on it about who they are. If I hold it upside down. Sorry. <laughs> you could have said something, Bill. Kick me wrong. <laughs> Um, so it's got their name and their, a picture of their family on it and then some contact info in the back. But again, as they said, obviously financial support, but even just a prayer partner uh, is great for, for who they are now that they're a part of our family. Um, as we come into this, I'm going to start. I'll lead us in an opening prayer, but I want to remind everyone that Pastor Craig's in the back. And if during our song time you do want to have a prayer with your pastor, he's back there and we welcome that as well. But if you would just join me in our opening prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for each and every day that you give us, for the sunshine outside, for the fresh air, for the heartbeat in our bodies, that you're able to bring us together to this place. Though we might be across the hall, it doesn't matter what room we're in or what building we're in, we know that you are here. That where two or more gather, you are with us, and we are so thankful for that gift, for that promise, and for that love. We thank you for the chance to just 
release our worldly issues as we come in here on Sunday morning, that we can truly focus on you, that we can worship you for the true King and the Lord that you are in our lives. We pray that you would help to fill us up and we can go out and share your light in the world. That you would be with Craig and the message he brings coming directly from you. That you would be with all of our musicians as they lead us in song and that we can sing beautiful music that you hear. And Lord, we thank you for each and every person here this morning. We know that we're all here for a reason. You've got a purpose and a direction for us and we thank you for that. We pray for the Fowler family that they were able to share and that they can continue to feel our love and spirit around them. Not only through this worship service, but in the days to come. We pray all this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Will you please stand and join me again in worship? I'd like to turn your attention to the words of Jesus for just a moment. He says in Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And I don't know about you all, but I could use a rest this Sunday. I could use a time to be refreshed, to be in the presence of God. So um, as we sing, I just pray that you might make that your heart's cry, that you could come into contact with the Lord and that you could have relief for your soul this morning. Lord, I come, Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest, and without you, I fall apart, you're the one that guides my heart, I need you, Lord, I need you, oh, I need you. And where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. Sing it again. Where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. my song to rise to you when temptation comes my way it will come and when I cannot stand I'll fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay when I cannot stand and when I cannot stand I'll fall on you sing it out loud Jesus you're my hope and stay how much you need him this morning. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. My one defense. My righteousness. 
bow your heads and pray with me. Lord Jesus, we do need you. We need everything that you are, Lord. Without you, we're not very much. We're weak, Lord. We are given to temptation. We are given to pain, sorrow, and grief. But we know, Lord, in you we can have the victory. We know, Lord, in you we can be strong, Lord. In fact, we can boast on our weakness because we know that you will support us no matter what. And we thank you for that this morning. And we just want to continue to praise you and lift you up and make sure that your name is glorified in this place this morning. In the name of Jesus, amen. Be still, my soul. Be still, my soul, for God is on your side. Bear patiently the cross of grief or pain. Trust in your God, your Savior, and your guide, who through all changes faithful will remain. Be still, my soul, your best, your heavenly friend, through thorny ways leads to a peaceful end. Be still, my soul, for God will undertake to guide the future surely as the past. Your hope, your confidence, let nothing change. All now mysterious shall be bright at last. Be still, my soul, your some wind still know. The voice that calmed them in this world below. Be still, my soul, the hour. Hastening on, amen. When we shall dwell with God forevermore, when disappointment, grief, and sorrow for God, though for God love's purest joys restored, be still. My soul, when change and fears are past, when safe and blessed we shall meet at last. Please be seated. Father, we thank you so much for the chance to come together today. We thank you for this place. We thank you for the freedom, the freedom to gather here as your people, as God's people in the corridor. We thank you so much for the servants who came before us and set up this space. We praise you for your truths, your truths that bring us together your truths that promise hope. Hope when the world is dark. Hope when we don't know the way ahead. Hope when the, the future is unknown. Your truth in the Bible and your forever and ever grace with your people. We praise you as our eternal father, our great physician, and the one who knows every hair on our head. The one who sees beyond the here and now and has a bigger picture for us. We praise you, Lord, this morning. We bring forth many um, prayer concerns from our family here. We pray for Kevin as he recovers from surgery for cancer. We pray for the family of Vanessa um, at her passing last week. 
and we pray that um, you just come alongside Vanessa's family and just strengthen them in this time as they remember. We pray for a brother, Glenn, who's having surgery on 820 on his heart. We pray for safe travels and the way back to Washington. This is from Harold and Tom Lee. Um, please be with Glenn and the staff that's treating him. Um, may your light shine bright there. We pray for a friend who's dealing with dementia and those that are surrounding that friend. Um, please bring peace. Peace to those um, surrounding the friend and the friend as well. May your light shine. We pray for Vicki, who is newly diagnosed with breast cancer and needs your love. She's a friend of Carol Smith. We pray that Bricky, Vicki can um, come to know you more through the diagnosis. May you be bold in her life. We pray for Cindy Coffrin's mom, Linda, who's having knee replacement surgery on August 8th. We pray that that surgery is a smooth and simple surgery. We pray that um, there's no complications and that she's able um, to enjoy a simple and speedy recovery. So we pray for Linda. We pray for those who are struggling with mental illness. May God be a place of hope for all of them. May the, um, the darkness that surrounds them and the mental illness um, be filled with your light, Lord. May you come alongside them. May you come alongside those who are caring for them and give them hope. And we pray for all um, who are healing after trauma um, and all the multiple pieces that after a traumatic event. Um, we ask for healing in mind, body, and spirit, Lord. And you know just who that prayer request is for. We pray for Jesus' love that will overcome the hatred in the world and that may peace prevail. We know that your hope is true and right. Please spread it all over. We pray for our friends, the Fowlers, that were able to come and share their mission, um, God's mission, with us. May they have safe travels home, and may those friends whom they are developing relationships in Costa Rica, those people that you've already ordained for them to meet and share the gospel with, please soften their hearts. Please give the Fowlers the words, the actions that make you come alive for those people. And may we as a body here come alongside them in prayer support and financial support, whatever you deem, Lord, for these gifts are yours to share your word and give hope across the world. Finally, we pray for all the victims in the mass shooting this week. Um, may your comfort be there. We pray for the family of Eddie Baskerville as they mourn her passing, Edie Baskerville, and they mourn Edie. Please be with them. We pray for and give thanks for Abel Joseph Sheriff, who's coming home after a four-month stay in the NICU. Praise be to God and all those who served him. We pray all these things and those that weren't voiced with the hope and the assurance that you are God. And all things are possible in your name. We pray these things that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Kids, if you want to come up, I have a short message. All right, guys. I am going to start with a short message, and we are in August, so I'm going to share all of my August messages are going to be inspired by the Holy Spirit and the garden. So I have all kinds of messages for you this month um, from the garden, and um, when I get done with our message today, those of you who have the memory verse, our July memory verse, I would love to, for you guys to share that with the congregation. So... Okay, so God is everywhere, right? We, yes, we learned that. And so God is in the garden. And here is a little challenge I've been having. I've been out and I've been trying to pick these. What are these? Oh my gosh, what are these? Tomatoes, are these edible right now? No, what would they be like? Does anybody know? They should be red when they're ripe. Yeah, well, these are actually going to be purple, but yes, red, purple, yellow, whatever they are. But right now, they're super hard. You guys feel those? They're really hard. They're not juicy. Yeah, yeah. they're really hard. 
And then here's something else I was trying to pick this week. What are these? Apples. apples. Do those look like ready apples? Are those ready to eat? No, they're tiny. And you know what? They're really, really sour. They're really good. They are, they are going to get better. They are going to get, they're going to get a lot better. If anybody wants to have an apple, Henry suggests they're good. Um, you can, and you can help yourself if you want. But these are, so these are not ready. They're not ripe. You can hold one. But if we wait, can I make this? Is there any way that I can make this turn red? Can I just look at it really nicely? No. Can I shake it and it turns red? No. We just have to wait, don't we? We have to wait for that to turn red and be ripe. Just like the tomatoes, we have to wait. And you know what? A lot of things, God asks us to wait for his timing. And I want to read you guys a scripture that just speaks right to that, about waiting for God's good timing. And I'm in the book of Psalms, and I'm in chapter 27. And here's verse 14, guys, and see how you think this squares up with what we're talking about. It says, wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart, and wait for the Lord. So my tomatoes are not going to ripen by me just looking at them. No, they are not going to be ripened if I shake them and try to get them to ripe. God will ripen these tomatoes, just like God will work through some things in our world that we want to have it right now. We're very ready, but in God's perfect timing, he will make it ripe, and he will bring that thing that we might be working with in our life into fruition. But does he ask us to just sit around? No! What if I just left my tomatoes there and I didn't pull the weeds and I didn't water them. I didn't have any tomatoes when it was time for them to ripen. They wouldn't ripen. So God calls us to work diligently ahead. We, we pray. It's like we pull the weeds. We water our plants. We work to share his word through everyone we meet. And he will work through us to bring those things that are good and perfect for us in his perfect timing. Can you guys pray with me? And I love to pray scripture. So we're going to pray our scripture today, okay? You just um, pray after me. Dear Heavenly Father, we wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart. And wait for the Lord. Thank you, Lord. For these true words in the Bible. Amen. Okay, before we take off, do we have any friends that would like to share our July scripture memory verse with us? Okay, we're going to have, if you'd like to share, could you stand up right over here by hope? So, for my friends, um, what was our attribute of God that we studied in the month of July? Love. Yes, God is love. And this is a scripture verse that we have um, been working on memorizing. For, for, for God, God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16. Good job, guys. Thank you. Okay, we can head to the music room. Hope Hazen, and I will be reading the book of Mark, chapter 2, verse 27. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. I'll take it. Thanks, babe. Good morning, everybody. Would you bow your heads and pray with me? As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. 
You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire. And I long to worship Thee. Lord, we have come this morning because even if we didn't know it, there's something down deep inside of all of us that yearns to worship. We, we have a tendency sometimes to substitute the wrong things as our, um, uh, our focus of worship. Sometimes it's our family. Sometimes it's um, our bank account. Sometimes it's a car. We, we have all these things, but the reason why we do that is because we have been created by you to worship. But there's only one thing, one person that actually fills that space within us that satisfies the yearning of our soul, and that is when we choose to worship you. And worship isn't just something that happens on Sunday morning. Worship uh, for a Christian is something that should be happening every moment of every day of our lives. Everything that we do should be an act of worship. And that's my prayer for us, that you would help us um, as we live out our lives as the body of Christ, that we would see our lives as worship, and that others would see you in us because of it. We claim the promise found in Isaiah 55, 11 that says, truly when it is your words that go out, they shall not come back empty. And that's my prayer today, that the word spoken would be yours and not mine. And my prayer is that your word would take root in us and produce fruit through us for the sake of the gospel. And as I said a moment ago, what that ultimately looks like is you in us. It's your light shining through us to a world that needs to know that there is light available even in the midst of the darkness, that there is peace to be found even in the midst of the chaos, that there is hope to be found in the midst of the brokenness. And that hope is you, Jesus. So thank you for loving us like that, and um, we thank you for the privilege that we have just to delve into your word and to worship you by learning more about you and what you want for us. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys like the reverb in here? I liked it when I was singing. I'm not sure I like it when I'm talking, but... <laughs> in Genesis chapter 2, it says that um, on the seventh day after God had created the heavens and the earth and all the hosts in them... It says that God rested, and God sanctified the seventh day, for on the seventh day, God rested. Now, we're going to take a stop. I'm going to stop right there and make sure we're all on the same page. Um, on what day of the week did God rest? Just yell it out. The seventh. the seventh day. And of course, we all know that the seventh day is Sunday, right? Wrong. According to the Bible, the seventh day is Saturday. Saturday is the Sabbath, which doesn't really fit the narrative, does it? Um, you remember here a few weeks ago, I was teasing Randy. We were, we, Randy and uh, Lisa and my Lisa, we, we lived in Pella once. And back in the day, um, Pella passed, the city fathers of Pella passed a, a law saying that no one could work on Sundays in Pella, right? And the, why was the reason for that? Because they were trying to honor the uh, fifth commandment, which says, keep the Sabbath day holy. But the problem is, as we've just mentioned, that the Sabbath day is not Sunday. Or, yeah, it's the Sabbath day is not Sunday, it's Saturday. So what's going on? What's, what's happening here? What is it that people over time have missed about this thing called Sabbath? Well, Today, as we continue in our um, sermon series on discipleship, and you remember what discipleship is, right? Discipleship in its very simplest form is um, you and I growing to be more like Jesus, to be more a reflection of Jesus, not just for ourselves, but for the world, correct? Well, today, as we continue in that sermon series, we're going to take a deeper look into this whole concept of Sabbath, specifically what Jesus had to say about Sabbath and a few other things too. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and open them up to Mark chapter 2. And I really want you to do that because we're going to be looking at pretty much the entire chapter 
of Mark chapter 2. So um, I'm not going to read every verse for you, but we're going to tell stories from the verses here in Mark chapter 2. Let me give you just a little bit of context. We find ourselves, as you might imagine, knowing that this is just the, the second chapter of the Gospel of Mark. We find Jesus, we find we're at the point in the story of Jesus' beginning earthly ministry. And what you will discover in all the stories that we're going to look at here in Mark chapter 2 is that Jesus is causing a ruckus from the very beginning. Now, I love that about Jesus because I have a tendency to be kind of rebellious myself. And the fact that he was kind of a, at least a worldly, he didn't ever rebel against God, of course, because he is God, but he, he would rebel against what the world set as standards. And you're going to find that in every one of the stories here in Mark chapter 2. For example, one day Jesus is, um, he, he's forgiving the sins of a guy who is disabled. And everybody knew back then that you shouldn't do that. The only one that can actually forgive sins is who? God. So the religious people were all up and offended by that. So they walked up to Jesus and they said, why are you doing that? And Jesus just looks at them and he says, he says, which is easier, to forgive somebody's sin or to heal them? And then I imagine he smiled a little bit, reached out a hand to this guy that had been paralyzed, and he was healed, and he said, your sins are forgiven. He just tweaked him, you know, with that little last one. He healed him, and then he forgave him. And then to, he had the gall, if you, as you continue on in Mark chapter 2, to hang out with a bunch of sinners that happened to be tax collectors, but we know that Jesus would hang out with sinners all the time, right? He would hang out with, with tax collectors and, and prostitutes, and, and you name it, he would hang out with them. And the religious folk were offended by the fact that he was hanging out with these sinners, and they said, why are you doing that? And he says, well, well, people don't need doctors. I have come not to call the righteous, but the unrighteous, the sinners, to repentance and salvation. That's my purpose. And then as he's hanging out with them, they're partying. They're, they're eating all the good food and they're having a good time. And another one, another one of the uh, religious folks walks up to him and says, you don't seem to be quite as holy as John the Baptist's disciples because they will fast. And, and the Bible says you ought to fast if you're going to be holy. And then Jesus continues to, he says, yeah, that's true, but you need to understand something. There are certain times when fasting is appropriate and cer certain times when it's not appropriate. And right now is the time to party because something's happening in the midst of you that has never happened before. It was him, right? And then one beautiful Sabbath day, as you continue on in Mark chapter 2, one beautiful Sabbath day, which was what? A Saturday. A Saturday afternoon, they're walking along, the sun is shining, the birds are singing. He's walking through a field of grain and he's hungry. So what does Jesus do? He, he reaches down and he picks some of the, grains, the, the, the grain off the stalks. He pops it in his mouth for a little Saturday afternoon snack. And again, the religious folks were offended. They said in Mark chapter 2, verse 23, they said, why do you do that which is unlawful on the Sabbath? Because apparently, plucking a few grains of wheat off these stocks and popping it in his mouth for a little snack was considered work. You know, supposed to work on the Sabbath. And then Jesus says in verse 27, don't you get it? Don't you know that the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath? Anybody, are you noticing a theme here? Can you see that there's, there's, a, there's something going on here that, that, that you should, you, you're supposed to be paying attention to? Why was Jesus time and time and time again upsetting these religious folks' apple cart? There's a reason. Now, you may have read Mark chapter 2 hundreds of times in your life, but my question is, have you noticed the pattern? And have you asked the question, why? Why was he doing that? Because he was giving you a clue every time 
he gave them an answer. He was giving you a clue as to what he was doing. Do you, did you see it? Do you, do you understand what he was saying? If you look real close at every one of his responses to those situations, what you'll discover him saying when you boil it all down is this. Every one of them when he was saying this. He was saying, be careful. Your religion is a good thing. Your spiritual disciplines, there's nothing wrong with your spiritual disciplines. But if you don't take the time to consider what the purpose is for those spiritual disciplines, you're going to miss the entire point. And all of a sudden, you will discover yourself or you will find yourself just checking off little religious boxes because you think that's what's expected out of you, is that you're supposed to check off little religious boxes if you're going to be a little religious person. God could care less if you were a religious person. You know what God cares about? He cares about you! God just wants to be in relationship with you. In every one of those instances, what he was saying is, I, I am the creator of the universe. I am as big as it gets. And I love you. And all these rules and regulations, commandments, whatever you want to call them, that you find in the Bible, that you sometimes find so onerous and so, so holding you down. All the, every one of them was given to you for one reason. I love you. You see, therein lies the problem that many of us have with God. We often view God and the things of God like a spoiled little child. When our parents give us rules, the rules of the house, and we chafe at them, and we think that's not fair, we oftentimes will say, you're just saying that because you're trying to make sure that you, everybody knows who's in charge. And then you become a parent, and then you realize that wasn't the reason, was it? My parents gave me these, these rules or these ways of the house or whatever because they love me and because they want what's best for me. The next time you find yourself being frustrated with the things you're reading in the Bible, stop for a second and ask yourself the question, I wonder why that's there. And then remember that it's probably there because he loves you. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Right? You see the correlation there? Here a few weeks ago, I ran into this guy. I hadn't seen him for a while. He was a, he was a former parishioner of mine, a friend of mine. He's still a friend of mine, but he's a former par parishioner. Hadn't seen him for a while. And, and um, first, when I first saw him, I realized, I mean, this, have you, ever, you, know, you ever have people in your life where you think, this, this, you look at him on the surface, you think, this guy's got it going on, right? This guy, you look at this guy, you think, he is living the American dream. He is... Um, He's got the world by the tail, the tiger by the tail. He is, uh, he is one of the winners of life's lottery. You know people like that, I bet. What you fail to understand oftentimes, and what you would fail to understand if you saw this guy, and that's what you would think, I know you would, you would fail to realize that indeed it has, the life that he has built for him has really nothing to do with luck. He has, he has accomplished what he has accomplished because he works all the time. <laughs> he works nights and weekends, and uh, as we were talking, he said he hadn't had a vacation. He couldn't remember the last time he had a vacation. And it wasn't just by accident. I believe that God brought us together because when, as he was telling me all the good things he had in his life, you know what he concluded? He was, he, he, all of a sudden, he let down the, the, um, the facade, and he said, Craig, I'm struggling. And I wanted to say, what do you have to struggle about, dude? You got everything. I didn't. He said, I'm struggling because I, I'm, I can't find joy in the middle of all this. 
And I said, what do you mean? He says, he said, I've worked so hard to build this successful life, and I'm burned out. I'm unhappy. I don't have the kind of relationship with, with people that I want to have because I'm working all the time. And all the while he's telling me this, you know what's going through my mind? Mark 2.27, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. See, here's the irony in this story. I can still visualize exactly where he and his family sat almost every Sunday in church. Did you hear what I just said? He comes, he did anyway, I haven't been there for a long time, but he, he came to church every Sunday. He checked off that religious box. But he couldn't remember the last time he had Sabbath. Now let me ask you a question. Do you think God is happy that he brought his family to worship every Sunday? Yes or no? Yes, he's happy that this guy brought his family to worship every Sunday. You know what God hates? He hates the fact that the guy is withering inside because he's not taking care of himself. Because he hasn't taken Sabbath. And not, he's, he doesn't hate the guy. He hates the, the fact that his, that, his, that his child is withering. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Do you get it? Every one of these things, whether you want to consider it a commandment, a rule, a mandate that you find in Scripture, that, you've, that you also find yourself chafing against a lot of times, they were given to you because your Papa loves you. Because Abba loves you. Because Daddy loves you. Not because he's some autocratic power monger that wants to make sure you know who's in charge. It's because God loves his kids. He loves you. Remember that, okay? Next time you're reading your Bible and you're feeling a little, remember that God loves you. Because... Um, what that will ensure, remembering will ensure that you don't become just one of those people who checks off a little religious box, and you will become a person, you're more likely to become a person who reflects Jesus, the joy of Christ, even when life isn't always good. And it'll bless you, and it'll also be a blessing to the world who doesn't even know that it's possible to be joy-filled, even in the midst of brokenness, who doesn't even know that it's possible to work hard but take Sabbath, who doesn't even know that God loves them when He does. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we, we love you, and we praise you for the privilege and the opportunity to, to even uh, explore the, these truths that we find in Scripture. We love you because, because even though there's lots of times when we fall into the trap of just checking off religious boxes, we know that you don't let us stay there and you're always going to push us and make us a little uncomfortable until we start asking those why questions. And every time those why questions lead us right back to the, the truth, which is Papa loves you. He always has and he always will. And he only wants what's best for you. Thank you for loving us like that, Jesus. Thank you for the privilege that we have to, to, to gather and to worship you every day not just on Sundays. Thank you. As we conclude this worship service this morning, I'm asking you, Lord, just to pour out the anointing of your Holy Spirit upon those that have gathered in this gym, 
that they might feel this love. I know that faith isn't about feelings, but sometimes we need it, Lord. I'm just asking you to pour out the anointing of your Holy Spirit upon these folks who have gathered here that they might know that they know that they know that they are loved. So that we might be filled up to go out and share that love with some others that need to know that too. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Will you please stand and join me in worship? Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name in a land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed, blessed be your name. name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name, with the sun shining down on me, with the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, on the roads marked with suffering. For the stain in the offering, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name, yeah. you give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Every blessing. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory. Name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Yeah, you give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say. bow your heads and pray with me. Lord Jesus, you control our lives. You control our destinies. You alone know all of our futures. You know all the trials, the tribulations, the temptations, and everything that we will face in this life, Lord. But much more than that, you're in control of them, Lord. It's not beyond your grasp. It's not beyond your power to control and contain, Lord. And you say in your word that you can take every trial, trouble, 
turmoil, grief, and you can turn it around for your good and bring glory to yourself. And we hold you to that promise today, Lord, and we believe it. Lord, we pray and we ask that we might believe it even more. And beyond that, that we might begin to live that way as if the end is coming, Lord, as if Christ is going to return, as if he is going to make everything the way that it should be. And we thank you that you will answer this prayer and do so much more beyond our comprehension. In the name of Jesus, amen.